In this episode, I'll answer your common questions of how I set up my projects in DaVinci Resolve for the Mac and get the 100% the same looking image as it was in my timeline after the export without any color and gamma shifts. We'll also explain the scopes and what functions of them I use and we'll show you my classic power grade note tree that you can download for free and use it in your projects. So first of all, for all of us Mac users, I think that everyone was struggling with this as I was for a long time, searching in the internet and finding a lot of different recommendations, but no one worked for me. The problem was that when I export my projects on Mac, uh, my colors and gamma shifts and the image become flat, but it was a great looking one in my DaVinci Resolve timeline. So here's the way to avoid that. The first step you should do when setting up DaVinci Resolve on your Mac is to go to the DaVinci Resolve preferences, navigate to the general tab and activate use Mac display color profiles for viewers. This will tell you that you should restart DaVinci Resolve to make it work properly. Okay, let's do that. The next step is inside of your project. I'll create a new project as an example, then go to my project settings. Choose the frame rate of my project, this will be 25 frames per second, and then navigate to the color management tab. As I like working with the color space transforms in a node structure, I leave my color science DaVinci RGB, but change my timeline color space from Rec 709 scene to Rec 709A. This is special for Mac users, and in my output color space I go all the way up and choose same as timeline, and then click save. Ok, I'll add one simple clip to my media pool and show you how I set my color space transforms and also the project delivery settings. Let's add the clip to the timeline, then switch to the color page, let's find the hero frame in my clip, I'll do the fast simple grade here to have a good reference, then export the render and compare them side by side, so you could see if there's any difference. For the fast color grade I'll choose my prepared power grade in my gallery. You can download this power grade for free from my website. I've added the link in the description. This is my classic power grade with some already prepared effects and also color space transform nodes. So my CST in is preset for my camera color space conversion to DaVinci White Gamut and my CST out is DaVinci White Gamut to Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4. So while everything is preset, I just have to choose my camera color space and gamma. This was shot on the red Komodo, so my input color space would be red white gamma RGB and input gamma red log 3G10 and my image is now converted to Rec. 709. This is not raw file, it's Apple ProRes here. I don't have the raw settings to set my white balance, so we'll have to do that in my offset wheel. So what do I have in this power grade? The first note is my standard per set for the noise reduction. The settings that I mostly use when I need to remove some digital noise. Let's go closer, as you see we have some noise on this darker wall, let's activate this node. Done! It removes that noise perfectly, but I will keep it disabled by now. I usually activate it at the end of my grade if I need to, because the noise reduction slows down the computer and all the process. So what do we have next? Some empty nodes like this for exposure and HSV saturation. This one is preset already for the correct color space and channel. So if you want to add that cinematic saturation, just go and push up your gamma or gain. Then empty notes for balance, corrections, this one is for secondaries. Next look creation, look adjustments and some preset power windows like vignette. You can adjust it as you wish or don't use it at all. And some for the lower part of the frame and for the sky if you need it. Then I have my glow note prepared with my usual settings. I can turn it on, adjust it if I need to but let's keep it off by now. Then CST out for Rec. 709 and some additional nodes. This is filmic contrast, that compresses an image a bit and still adds more contrast. You can play with it as you want, this is just my standard settings. And the last one is Resolve's native grain, that fits my taste. You can change its parameters, make it smaller or bigger, softer or sharper. Just make it by your taste and project preferences. Ok, so what I'm going to do now? Let's make the fast grade so we have our colors, contrast and balance in place and then make the render and compare it with our timeline. If it's the same as we see it in DaVinci Resolve. Ok, I will add my indicator lots so they could help me to get better white balance, skin tones and pure blacks and whites if I need to. Close the gallery. Great, I will start from my exposure. This image is really contrasty and I just want to add a little bit more shadows here. So we'll push my lift down a bit, something like that. And I also feel that I want more saturation. 
So we'll add it in my HSV node by pushing my gain up, like so. Okay, let's switch to our balance node. I will use my white balance indicator lot here to see where this image is pushed to. Yes, everything sits towards magenta blue here. Let's check on the scopes. Correct. As you see, magenta and blue are dominant channels on my vector scope. Balanced image should include all color channels. I'm missing yellow a bit and totally miss the green channel here. Even in the highlights, them should be more neutral white here. Okay, so let's go to the balance node and remove some blue in the offset something like that then let's add some red here to warm up an image like so now i see that magenta color is dominant so to reduce the magenta i have to add the green here watch on the vector scope too let's add the green channel a bit now i want to split that difference i'm looking on the highlights here to get them more neutral so let's look at what lot been indicating before the balance and this is after okay it looks better Let's turn off the LUT. This is how my image looks now. Look at before and after the balance. It's still not super perfect, but much better than before. I'll leave it by now and will correct it a bit better later if I need to. Let's check our skin with the skin tone indicator LUT before our balance. As you see, the skin tone was way too cold and too magenta. Let's turn on the balance. And now we brought back some orange and greenish tone in our skin, but still keeping magenta reds in skin shadows. For more information, you should also watch my full in-depth episode about the skin tones if you haven't already. The link is somewhere here, but now let's move forward. Okay, but I still feel that it's too magenta for me. I'll come back to my balance node and add more green. Not too much. I'm looking at the vector scope too. Here's way too much magenta now and also on the blue tail here. I want to center it between green and magenta. Something like that to split the difference. Okay. I think I'm happy with the result now. I get better color separation in the skin. Okay, let's check it again before and after. So let's turn off our indicator lot. Yes, it looks better for me now. Once again, before and after the balance. Okay, so I'm not going to do any strong look creation here. I want to be faster, so I would use my creative lot for the final look. I don't need this filmic contrast node here. So let's reset it and make it my lot node. I have my own versions of popular codec and Fujifilm print film LUTs that are made to be used after Rec. 709 conversion. I have three different modifications of them, like Fuji Cold, Fuji Medium, Fuji Warm, and same for codec Cold, codec Warm, and codec Medium. In this case, I think I'm going to choose codec Cold. I like it more here. Let's turn off this LUTs window and check what my LUT is doing here. It creates really nice filmic look. I only feel that it's pushing the skin tone a bit more towards magenta side. It's easy to correct that in the same LUT node. I just grab my global hue and push it left a little bit, like down to 48, and it looks great for me. Okay, let's check it again with the skin tone indicator LUT. Yes, it looks correct. It maintains all the color separations and all the color sits in places. Great, let's check out look again before and after the LUT. Nice, I like it. So what would I want to do next? Maybe saturate my blues a bit more. I will do that in the secondary node. Go to Hue versus Saturation, choose my cyan and blue channels to get wider selection, remove one point and add more saturation in my blues. Like so. Let's check the shot. Okay, I think I also want to add a little bit of glow. We'll turn on my glow node. It's a bit too strong for this look. So let's reduce its effect and make it more subtle. In this case, I will go to the global blend and push it down, something like 30%. Okay, I like it. Let's turn off an effects window and check what the glow does here. It's adding a little bit more contrast and spreads my highlights. Okay, nice. So my last step would be the grain here. And then activate my noise reduction node. Great, I think I'm done. Let's go to the Deliver page and export the project to check if there will be some gamma and color shifts. Let's name it as Test Shot. We'll stay with MP4 H.264 codec. Let's go to the Advanced Settings. And here in my Color Space tag and Gamma tag, I leave as it is, same as Project. I don't want to change anything here. OK, add it to Render Queue and press Render All. Fine, it's rendered. Let's bring this render here and compare it side by side with our timeline. Them are both the same, 
same contrast, same colors, everything is the same. I only get that H.264 compression in my render, but chosen codec doesn't affect gamma and color shift, so you can choose whichever you want. So these are my settings for Mac users, that works great. But now let's come back and talk a little bit more about my scopes and how I set them. My scopes are usually on my second monitor and I use four scopes turned on. Let's bring them up. Ok, so my main scope is the waveform. I think you understand how to read it, but if not, I'll explain it quickly now. I will just make it look standard as it is in DaVinci Resolve. Ok, so the waveform is indicating the luminosity of your image, where 100 is the brightest point possible and 0 is the darkest black point. So we never want to push an image below the 0 because it will crash our blacks, and same, we do not want to push higher than 100, otherwise our highlights will clip. Just keep your image between 0 and 100. As you see, when I'm moving my mouse on an image, there is a white circle moving on my waveform too. So I could easily understand how bright this image area is. This is an additional resolves function. To turn it on or off, just navigate to three dots of the scopes and select display qualifier focus, because standardly it is turned off. Like so, it shows nothing now. So I always keep it on, to see the exact location on my scopes. Usually when I'm working, this waveform is set to the colorized RGB mode, so I could see the red, green and blue channels separately. It helps to understand which color is dominant in certain areas. For example, if I go to this blue furniture here, I see that my blues are dominant, greens sits lower and reds are the lowest here. And the skin, it's different now, our reds are dominant and the blues sits the lowest. So I could see what colors are pushed in the certain areas of an image. If all red, green and blue circles are aligned together, that means that this area is neutral, like pure black, white or grey, and has no saturation in it. For example, if I would want to neutralize this floor, I would have to add a bit of green and much more red here. What about the vector scope? It indicates the hue and saturation values. The center point is zero saturation, is where our neutral blacks, whites and grays live. All other saturated areas are pushed towards certain colors and hues like red, yellow, green, cyan, blue, magenta and in between. I use my vector scope a lot for shot balancing and checking the saturation levels. I also have my skin tone indicator line here. Standardly it's turned off, so to turn it on or off, just navigate to the vector scope menu and select show skin tone indicator. Next is my histogram. The left side 0 means like on the waveform, the darkest blacks, and 100 is the brightest point. I like just checking if I clip any of them here. And my second waveform is always set to luminosity channel and colorized. So I could see some color separation in my image. For example, colder shadows shown in bluer color, the skin shown here. This image is bright and clean, so I see my waveform white color in the brighter areas. This waveform is usually set colorized and only white channel. All the LUTs I've been using today are available in my website gradelikepro.com by the link in the description. But now I want to thank you all for watching, I hope you found this episode helpful. As always, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!